ladies and gentlemen, whether you're tuning in in Twitch chat uh, or through YouTube, hello. Uh, today is April 11th, and Arxis has revealed to us the format of the next uh, Arcworld Tour of 2024. And so going in, going in, I already had some criticisms about the last World Tour that they did. Uh, because there were some things kind of like kind of last minute really felt like wasn't really cohesive. Uh, there were definitely some gaps and some things that I think they glossed over. And so we're going to look to see if they made some improvements that on this year. Now, world tours are obviously we talk about world tours a lot on this channel. They're so, so important to the ecosystem of a game. Uh, if you're going to support a game and do a tour, do it the right way, right? You have to do it the right way. Unfortunately, this is the situation ends up if you do a world tour and you don't do it the right way, it actually can serve as a detriment instead of helping uh, in some ways. And so it's really important that if if devs and publishers are going to take this step to to support their games, that they're going about it in a way that actually does help. <laughs> and that's why we talk about world tours a lot on this channel. But let's take a look at what is different about Arc World Tour. 2024 so we got arc world tour back again and we got okay first thing that they show is prizing okay 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 this might be uh let me let me go ahead and move myself over here so that you can see everything okay so we got 50k for first okay okay this, this looks actually really similar to uh to their prize splits from last year let me see if i can pull those up real quick Except uh, they had, it seems like there's more qualifying slot, which is good. Which is good. Okay, so here was Guilty Gear for last year. So it was still 50k, 50 2010, which is the same. 2.5. Okay, so a little bit. No, no, they go to 5. 2.5, 1.5, 1, and the 750. It's actually, it's actually the exact same. It's, it's actually the exact same from last year, uh, payout structure-wise. Uh, except uh, now Rising has the same amount, which is cool. Rising actually getting its first actual world tour this time around, as opposed to uh, kind of speed running. Uh, they only had three events on the on the world tour for for grand blue last time because the game came out so late it came out in december um and so there were only three events with two people qualifying from each and so this time it looks like they're actually going to give it the proper go around uh, which is good and then for under night uh it looks like we got a little bit less money in it but uh 2010 5 3 okay so they're only doing eight they're only doing eight for under night and they're doing 16 for both rising and strive okay okay actually i'm a little interested as to uh, actually no no that no this makes sense this makes sense makes sense so i think i think at a glance like some people will like look at this and be like you know under night is super super new why does it have less than these other games uh i mean honestly it a lot of that probably has to do with the how much money the devs have like <laughs> <laughs> we all know Strive made a shit ton of money. We all know Psy Games has gotcha money out of the wazoo. I uh, think it might be a little difficult for French Bread to to support financially on that end uh, when it comes to prize pool. But this is still this is still good. This is still, this is still fine. Of course, you know I wish we lived in a world where there wasn't a zero added to each of these. Um, but you know it, it is what it is. And I also you know aggressive prize splits are something that I uh, feel very strongly about. Like this is, this is like kind of like FGC standard split structure where like 50% goes to the win. I don't think you need to do that, honestly. Uh, I Like when I, whenever I talked about Capcom Cup, I brought this up a lot about how, like when you have prize pools, you should really focus on distributing it in a way that like makes the ecosystem sustainable to players that are looking to do it full time, right? Uh, now 100K is not a ton of money in the grand scheme of things, especially when we're comparing to 1.7 million of Capcom Cup, but it's still something, right? And when you have something, you should probably focus on making it so like people break even on their trip no matter what, right? Like at the very least, like make it sustainable in that end so where they're not like losing money going, going to the trip and stuff. So 
A um, little bit of still criticism there. I wish they would have switched up the price list just a little bit, but what can you do? At least the first place can say they got like a, you know, a mid-range salary <laughs> before taxes, uh, but completely different thing. So we'll scroll down here. So we got rules. So this is a big change up actually. Um, the previous Arc World Tour was uh, all like essentially uh, overwhelming majority of it was uh, like auto qualifiers right so they designated events that were auto qualifiers and then like those those events also had points associated with them uh, and so the people that had the most points that didn't auto qualify would obviously then qualify through that means looks like they're switching it up this time they've actually split their events into multiple different tiers platinum gold and silver uh and uh the point the point amounts are uh, different depending on the tier of event, which is great. The auto qualifiers are still there. The platinum, um, the platinum tier, the platinum tier is still there. Uh, and so if you win one of these, you get auto invited. Love this. I think pretty much every world tour should do this. If you're going to do like a, a, a big, like a, a tiered event like this, the biggest tier, make it auto qualify, right? You can still have point values and everything else, but make it auto qualifier. If you win, you know, the, the highest tier of event, it just makes sense, right? You've proven yourself at that point. You definitely deserve to be there uh, without question. Uh, yeah, so interesting. Three tiers of events, platinum, gold, and silver. Um, platinum and gold, both offline exclusively. Silver, and this is a big change. Silver events are actually all online. They're all online. So uh, we'll get a little bit more into that later. This is the first time in a while uh, that I think Arc Arc has said any type of online involvement in the ecosystem. So I'm curious as to what that's gonna look like, what events are actually gonna be, uh, what events are actually gonna be in this silver tier and worth points. Uh, we will be paying very, very close attention to that because uh, it's the first time that they're doing it and I'm wondering how they're gonna execute. Uh, yeah, Uni 2 nope, uh, only only has platinum for Uni. So there, platinum events, uh, in my from from the research that I did, uh, platinum events <coughs> uh, are platinum for all three. Uh, Uni doesn't have gold events and it doesn't have silver events. All of their events are platinum, uh, and so like what this kind of means is that Uni is kind of on the old system of Arc World Tour, where they have uh, they just have eight events and they're auto qualifiers. They're not doing points. Right. They're, they're not doing any type of points or anything, which I think is a little bit of a missed opportunity. In my eyes, I don't see a reason. Um, I don't see a reason why you wouldn't do points still for uni. Like, honestly, uh, I'm, I, I, yeah, I don't know. I, I really don't agree with that, uh, honestly, because like doing eight events, auto qualifier only. Like I said, I think there are people that are extremely consistent at fighting games that you know, in a season, they might just not win an event. They might not get first. They might get second and third a bunch of times. They might place top eight every single time, right? Need I remind you guys about the whole Men RD situation in Street Fighter VI, right? Uh, Men RD like went a long time without winning an event, but he placed like top three in a ton of stuff. He still didn't qualify for Capcom Cup until he eventually won an online event, right? And, and that's kind of what you want to avoid. You want to reward people that are being consistent, uh, especially if it involves like traveling around the world to compete in these events right so don't really agree with that um but yeah I'm, I'm actually very curious as to why the disparity for uni 2 is so large and uh my intuition like based on like event organizing stuff you could just you could just do uni the same structure as the other two i would have loved to see that they decided to do a more condensed and smaller format for it I don't know if that was at the will of the people involved or maybe that, like I said, maybe there's money issues. Maybe there's this or that um, and budget things. I'm not sure. But either way, a uh, little bit, a little bit of a missed opportunity there in my eyes. Uh, OK, and then we have down here. We platinum winners immediately qualify for the finals. Of course, tour points will be awarded based on tournament standings. Makes sense. The top players with the highest point totals at the end of all qualifying events, except for the LCQ, will receive invitations to the ARC world tour finals 2024 i so i wonder uh i'm getting maybe there'll only be seven uh maybe there'll only be seven plot events for uni then and then one lcq because like i assume it's gonna have an lcq as well uh i guess we'll wait for info on that but 
yeah because they're doing they're doing eight slots though so i assume one of these is lcq uh maybe two and two um is would would be the guess it should be a little bit more in line with what they did last time so yeah okay and then they have the schedule so um we're starting with uh evo japan <clears throat> and going all the way through there's a lot of events here uh and the important thing to note is that uh well first of all climax of night doesn't have like there's no location for this yet is <laughs> at least at least i don't think we know they said they don't seem to know because it's not on their website so i don't know where that'll end up being uh but then down here at the very 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 bottom under everything it says the silver qualifiers will be online tournaments held in certain regions details will be released at a later date huge huge deal so i've always talked about how like if you're going to do a world tour it needs to have an ecosystem that supports both offline and online but the important thing is that you make offline the absolute focus you make it clear that offline is the primary and you know online events are supplementary and with this system uh they're doing that right it, it's very very clear they've upped the amount of offline events that are on the tour they went from only 12 i believe last year uh to now there's 20 which is great always always great to have more events on the tour uh it lets you spread things out better and also show more love to other regions um so i do think that's very positive uh not of course not all the information is there quite yet but uh it should look good so i do have some i do have a visual aid to kind of show you guys so looking at the arc world tour for this year uh this is what our map looks like so the gold uh the gold events the gold tier events are highlighted in gold the platinum tier events are highlighted in purple and events that have or, or regions that have both both a platinum and a gold event uh, are like in the striped coded uh <laughs> in the in the uh striped pattern here i could probably even make this a little larger so that might be a little easier to see since we don't have anything over to the left there but um so yeah this is what this is what the spread looks like currently uh main criticism for this from me is that there is not enough love there's not enough love to south america uh or africa for that matter which are like two two regions where there's definitely like active fighting game communities like definitely not negligible uh and uh they're just not there and and so like i thought that was a little weird um i thought that was super super weird actually that there's such a gray area uh for for south america and africa a uh, little bit a little bit odd but uh aside from that uh it you know pretty decent volume of events and in some pretty uh varied and interesting locations which is cool uh which is kind of what you're looking for with a world tour but for those of you who don't really understand what i mean when i'm saying like i wish it was a you know at least there's a little bit more variation here let me show you what the map looks like for tekken world tour right this is what Tekken World Tour looks like. So their pink events are their master events, their highest tier, and their light blue events are their challenger events. So as you can see for Tekken, right, they have all of this covered. <laughs> they have South America, they have Africa. There's an event in Madagascar for God's sake. That's so cool, right? Uh, of course, they got Australia, they got New Zealand in there. So they really stretch from like the tip of the map to the tip of the map. Um, and kind of trying to cover just about everything in between, <clears throat> which is good. I think Tekken is actually a uh, really, really good, <clears throat> really, really good uh, kind of blueprint for the way that fighting game devs should structure their world tours. Like there's, there's more events on the Tekken world tour, which like is a part of the reason that they're able to do this uh, as effectively, right? Like Arc World Tour increased their events um, to 20 but let me take a look and see how many how many tekken events there are because there's way there's way more <laughs> there's way more offlines for tekken there's 12 master events alone and then 21 20, so they have i think they have 26 20 so they have six more offlines and what that lets them do is <clears throat> distribute where these events are a little bit better um and so that would kind of be the next step that would kind of be the next step for our world tour we're trying to get to that point and like i will go ahead and flash this back and forth so you guys can see the difference here right 
switching between the two. Do you see it? Do you see what I mean by like there's kind of just a void here for <laughs> for Arc World Tour? See, like this kind of there's just kind of a void there, right? Um, kind of wish that was filled in. I don't think they're gonna go back and add events uh, at this point as they've already uh, put up a bunch of events and one of them doesn't even have a location. Like I really don't know. I don't know where Climax of Night is. It's in the U.S. somewhere. But it, it doesn't have a location or a date yet, so I don't, and, it, and that'll be a, a platinum only for for uni, by the way. Uh, it won't be for for gear or rising, uh, according to their map. So that's what we're looking at for for Arc World Tour this time around. Um, my overall summary is that it's a, it's significantly better. Um, however, okay, let me tell you why it's better. <laughs> It's better because you're finally you're finally implementing um, you're finally implementing online events, which needed to be done, uh, which is good. Uh, they added more events, which is always good. And they added more games. There's three games. There's three actual games with a tour this time, not Guilty Gear, not the Guilty Gear World Tour plus rising and uni who had like weird format last minute thrown together things it's like actually three world tours uh which is good uh however uh criticisms prize pool staying the same i get it but like come on bro he's like <laughs> come on bro c c come on come on i think they could probably afford to up a little bit um honestly especially on uni's end i feel like it it should like it maybe it shouldn't be equal to the other two but like i think they could come up a little bit on it, especially because it's a new game it's the first of its world tours right right it, it's the first of its world tours right and you don't want to feel you don't want that community to feel like they got the short end of the stick i'm not saying that they did but i'm saying that like if people feel that way it's arguably just as bad or maybe even worse than if they actually did get the short end of the stick right the moment people feel like they've been slighted there's like no there's no recovering those relationships so um i don't think people will be as hyperbolic with that i hope not i mean but then again it's fighting game player so maybe they will but yeah i wish there was a little bit more money i would have loved for uni to get the same treatment as the other two games uh in terms of like actually doing the point structure and all that Obviously, there's things that I don't know that happen behind the scenes that might be preventing that from happening, but treat UD as an equal. Why not? Why? Why are we to treat it as an equal? There's no reason not to. Um, they should have put out their LCQ information immediately, I think. I, I don't think they have a rule document yet. I think if you're going to drop things like this, you need to tell people absolutely everything at once. Tell them, like, they probably don't have the location or or, or venue, like, locked down just yet. <laughs> uh, but, like, that would be nice information to include. Like, where's the LCQ going to be? Where's the finals going to be? If you can afford to give up that information. How many people are going to qualify through LCQ? It might be obvious to people like us that have looked at World Tours for a long time. But what about the people that might be new to this, right? These are two brand new games on the tour after all. Rising came out in December and Uni came out in what, February, right? So it's, uh, it might not be immediately clear what is going on to those people. So I think they should have included that as well. But overall, uh, a big improvement for Arc World Tour. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. Uh, hopefully, hopefully the competitors are excited for it as well. Uh, there are some out there's some issues outside of the tour itself that you know i know people are giving pushback on arcs just about the timing of the strife patch right it's something that people are talking about uh they're asking why didn't you drop season four with abba uh why are you because you know evo japan's coming up and it's going to be played on season three patch and then somewhere down the line, the season four patch is going to happen. And so things are going to get shaken up. Characters are going to be different. Systems going to be different. And players are going to have to adapt to that mid tour, which isn't necessarily the best situation to be in if you're a competitor. Like if you're, if you're a competitor, you're looking to lock down that strategy and, you know, optimize it over while you're playing in these events during the tour. And so I can see like why, uh, why players are pushing back on that. Uh, a little bit more communication on that end would be great. Uh, of course, Arc is going through transitional time. They have like new community manager. They have new staff and stuff like that. So I'm sure they'll figure it out eventually. But uh, yeah, 
We, get, we can't cut them any slack. We can't cut them any slack. You guys are making good changes and doing good work. We hope that you continue to make good changes and do good work. Otherwise, you'll get another video from me. And you don't want that. You don't want that. <laughs> That's pretty much what I have on the Arc World Tour. Curious as to what you guys think uh, in chat. How are you guys feeling? 